We'll see anywhere on our day shelter, anywhere between 200 to 300 people a day that come to our doors. Las Vegas is under an excessive heat warning. Right now, community groups are helping our most vulnerable cool off. Water, shade for humans and their furry friends at a shelter in downtown Las Vegas. Yeah, Marie, we went from unseasonably cool to unbearably hot. I'll tell you what you need to know to stay safe this holiday weekend. And 10 years after disaster on Mount Charleston, signs of optimism growing after the massive Carpenter One fire. News 3 starts now. Thank you for joining us for Live After the Game. I'm Marie Mortera. Well, summer is playing catch up this weekend. We have gone from a record cool streak to now dangerously hot within days. We have your team coverage tonight, our Ambar Rodriguez, with where the community can keep cool during the excessive heat. But first, Ophelia Young has more on, what can we say? I mean, really, they're scorching temperatures. And they're scorching. It's really hot and it's suddenly and unexpectedly really hot. We're just coming off the longest recorded period under 100 degrees. We hit 100 yesterday, now forecasted to hit 110 as early as tomorrow. Now, 110 isn't unusual for Las Vegas. Many of us who've lived here know that, but officials are um, uh, worried our bodies have not had time to acclimate to the heat. It usually takes us two weeks to get used to extreme hot or cold. We are given a record two days. That's right. The shortest time between hitting 100 and 110 is two days. A record set in 1955 and we can expect to tie that record with our forecasted high of 111 tomorrow. But this isn't the only reason the National Weather Service has issued a warning. Remember too is that the holiday means that we have tourism. So people are coming from different climates. Um, if they're coming from Texas, it's already hot. And they're coming to another hot place. But they also people are not prepared for how dry it is out here. So they get dehydrated very quickly, adding yet another vulnerability to heat. So the excessive heat warning issue, not just because it's a holiday weekend, but because there is just two days of acclimation time and little to no overnight relief. So we're not even getting a break overnight with highs up to 118 and overnight lows close to 90 degrees this weekend. Death Valley highs up to 125. So the heat risk this weekend, depending on where we are in southern Nevada, moderate here in the valley, but major for some areas outside of Las Vegas, which does mean the heat will affect anybody in that area without proper cooling or without enough hydration. Highs today ranging anywhere from 102 in Blue Diamond to 112 in Sunrise. So Nellis and Sunrise, they've hit the 110 mark and we're expecting to do the same tomorrow with 111 forecasted for our high. 110 in Pahrump, 100 in Caliente and down in Laughlin, 117. If you're going to be out by the lake, you're looking at 117 as well. So at the risk of sounding like a tape recorder, here are some reminders. Wear loose light clothing, carry that water with you, that sunscreen, stay in the shade and keep especially special attention on your kids, your loved ones and uh, your elderly. Winds return on Monday, bringing in some slightly cooler air. I'll have your full weather forecast coming up for now. Let's go back to Marie. All right, Ophelia, thank you. Well, several local nonprofit organizations are making sure residents have a place to stay cool. Not easy with these temperatures. This is Ambar Rodriguez here in studio with what you need to know if you need a place to get out of the heat. That's right, Marie. As we all know, this heat can be dangerous, especially if you are outside without shelter or water. Thankfully, there are several cooling shelters which are open to everyone. Juan Salinas, the director for social services with the Salvation Army in Southern Nevada, says this year the nonprofit's day shelter is already seen an increase in residents using the vital resource. He says there are no requirements needed to use the space, which includes an air conditioned building, a place to shower, do your laundry, and connect with other resources you may need. People can come in for a warm up for a little bit and leave and go back and forth. The other thing that we provide on our campus is a free meal that is provided every day between 1.30 and 2.30. It's one hour, and, and during that one hour, we can serve anywhere, anywhere between three to 500 meals in one hour. Right now, the Salvation Army is in dire need of bottled water for residents using the shelter. Selena says when the weather reaches triple digits like it is now, the nonprofit goes through four pallets of bottled water a week. Today, when I was there, the organization was at its last pallet, and anyone interested in donating can do so any day of the week at the shelter. For now, live in the studio, Ambar Rodriguez. Back to you, Marie. And the call to action there on a much-needed resource. Ambar, thank you. Well, in these extreme conditions, we are reminded of the potential 
potential for fire danger, especially today. 10 years ago, the Carpenter One fire began, lasting for more than a month and destroying nearly 30 acres of forest land. News 3's Kalia Patterson shows us what's being done to bring the area back to life. All the way across this entire basin, actually to over there. You can see that whole hillside is burned too. It was a fire that terrified a community and tore down thousands of trees more than 500 years old. Every ring is a year of the tree's life. Ray Johnson with the United States Forest Service says the Carpenter One blaze didn't start as a major fire, but it had a major impact. Well, the fire was fairly intense, so it burned everything that was in its path. People were really concerned they, some of them were gone two weeks, three weeks. They didn't know if their homes were going to be there when they got back. Leaving the community to fight one extreme to the next. The larger effect was the flooding at that time. Flooded some neighborhoods, washed away roads, was going through people's homes. What saved the surrounding communities was cutting the fuel breaks months ahead. What it did was lessen the intensity of the fire which meant our firefighters could be safe. Although the Carpenter One fire was started by a lightning strike, Johnson says people starting fires is still a concern, especially this holiday weekend. Let people know that like over the 4th of July, there's no fireworks up here at Mount Charleston, really any time of year. And that includes the safe and sane kind that are in town. Walking through the once tree-filled forest, Ray shows us what there is to look forward to after 10 years. This is a great example of a young new ponderosa tree. It's going to take many generations to get those large ponderosa trees back to the where they were. But they are starting to regrow. And the future after disaster is promising. It was devastating at the time, but Mother Nature is healing the mountain and it's recovering very nicely. Kalia Patterson reporting KSNV News 3. An 18 year old is in custody for allegedly stabbing a man to death in the Central Valley last night. Police have identified him as Wyatt Conway. They say he was in an argument with another man, stabbed him and then took off. That man taken to the hospital where he died. Conway was taken to the Clark County Detention Center where he was booked for open murder. So I'm traveling to Maine. It's been over two days and I still haven't even seen Maine. Travelers on the move for the 4th of July weekend. Some trapped in airports for days as flight delays and cancellations up and air travel. They're airing their frustrations while the White House says they're trying to help. And before we go to break, a number of new laws take effect today. Senate Bill 294, which requires all licensed firearm dealers to provide a storage or locking device for every gun sold or transferred. Another is Rex's law named for a 13 year old Henderson boy getting killed outside of his middle school. It increases the penalty for reckless driving causing bodily harm or death. Holiday travel is in full swing and millions of Americans are under severe weather threats ahead of the 4th of July. AAA projects more than 50 million people will hit the roads or the skies. A very busy LAX behind me there over the next few days. A record breaking number. Shelly Malashi has the latest on what to expect. So I'm traveling to Maine. It's been over two days and I still haven't even seen Maine. This is certainly the, the craziest experience I've dealt with. It's been a week full of travel headaches for Americans with thousands of flight delays and cancellations due to severe weather and staffing shortages. And the 4th of July weekend is shaping up to be more of the same. The Department of Transportation and the FAA are working closely with airlines to help minimize flight disruptions resulting from extreme weather. More than 100 million people face the risk of damaging winds, tornadoes or hail in the next 48 hours and major airports from the south to the northeast could see disruptions. The TSA expects to screen 17.7 million people during what's predicted to be the busiest travel weekend on record. According to AAA, more than 2,500 flights had been delayed by Saturday afternoon. We're here about three hours early, and then it was delayed 45 minutes. There is a level three of five enhanced risk for severe storms for parts of several states. By Sunday, the highest chance for severe storms stretches from western Kentucky to New Jersey.
Then when we push forward into Sunday, the bulk of that begins to spread into the mid-Atlantic, the northeast, but we also have more showers and thunderstorms across the southeast. Meanwhile, at least 20 record high temperatures could be broken this weekend across California, Arizona, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Florida. I'm Shelley Malashi reporting. So you saw those numbers there, mm. and now you're going to see our numbers too. Yes, and um, our numbers are, um, yeah, they're a little they're bit right alarming yeah. after coming off a June that was only three days, three or four days that was above at or above normal. Mm -hmm. Now we're starting off July way above normal. So. Yeah, we've got some heat coming our way, and if you thought today was hot, you're going to want to brace yourself for the next two days. It was a really warm day today, sun going down over the mountains, and uh, highs anywhere from 102 in Blue Diamond all the way to 112 in Sunrise. Nellis also broke the 110 mark. <clears throat> That's what we're expecting tomorrow, but today we stayed just a couple degrees shy of that 108. Even warmer than last year, which was 103. Average for today is 103, and we're sitting at that right now. 103 degrees with light winds outside. 100 in Summerlin, they're about to drop back into the double digits. The rest of us, 104 in Sunrise, 103 in Henderson. And uh, if you're going to be out tonight, we'll hold on to the hundreds until 11 o'clock or so. And we'll drop into the low 90s at about 1 o'clock. Overnight low, 86 degrees, clear skies, and at least those winds will stay light, 5 to 10. Lows tonight, 70s and 80s, 60s in Tonopah, 59 in Caliente. We're well out of the 40s now and even out of the 50s by tomorrow. And we've got an area of high pressure that's sitting over us. That's what's responsible for the increasing heat. It's put most of the West Coast under one warning or another, including, of course, here in southern Nevada. We're all under a warning except for the higher elevation mountains. Southern Nevada highs up to 118 this weekend and Death Valley up to 125. Tomorrow, 111, our forecast high. 108 out in Summerlin, 114 in Lake Las Vegas. Outside of Las Vegas, we're looking at 117 if you're going to be spending your holiday weekend out at the lake. 117 also in Laughlin and Death Valley at 123. They surged up to the 120s. 111 here, very hot and sunny. Those winds are going to stay light. Heat risk is moderate here in the valley, but major in some places outside of Las Vegas, which does mean in those areas the heat will affect anyone without proper cooling and anyone with without enough hydration. So keep that water on hand. Also that SPF, seek shade often. Wear loose, light clothing and keep an eye on your pets, your kids and your elderly. We've got uh, temperatures just a little bit warmer on Monday as a result of some winds that'll move in. But behind those winds, we have temperatures dropping just a bit for the rest of your week, just in time for 4th of July. 107 sunny and very hot in Las Vegas. We're expecting afternoon winds to about 20 miles per hour, but the winds should calm down after dinner time, allowing for some friendlier conditions for your fireworks. After that, we'll hover around 105, 106 which is much more normal for this time of the year. Hopefully by then, mm. much of us will have uh, acclimated to the heat and, and we can finally call that normal mm. as the normal by then will be around 104 and 105. We were so spoiled though to I be know, it, below normal. It was nice and weather is catching up and it's catching up fast. Welcome to July, everyone. Yes. <laughs> Ophelia, thank you. thank you. Too early to think about the classroom? Not for one nonprofit hoping to help the children of military families get ready for the first day of class. The National Nonprofit Operation Homefront hosted its 16th annual Back to School Brigade today. The group gave out more than 400 backpacks filled with school supplies to children of military families. The program ensures military children have the resources they need to succeed in school while easing any financial burden. Since the program began in 2008, it has saved families more than $60 million in back to school expenses. So the best part of this for me is serving the families and I have a personal connection because my father served in the army for 26 years so it's personal for me but knowing that as a country our organization being national is we fill in the gaps for our military families to support them to provide the relief and support programs that we have. Operation Homefront also provides critical financial assistance and housing for families. To learn more, we have a link on news3lv.com. Parents in need of help can attend baby bounties 
diaper banks across the state in July. Families can receive a week's supply of diapers and wipes for up to three children at each diaper bank. Registration for Baby's Bounty is required for Henderson, Las Vegas and North Las Vegas locations. Registration opens a week before each bank. We also have a link for more information on news3lv.com. Trending today, what some couldn't do online. The Twitter tie up and the limits that could affect how you scroll. That's ahead. new home sites to public road projects. Thieves have become especially active at construction sites here in the valley, helping themselves to everything from electrical breakers to copper to power tools and is costing Southern Nevadans both time and money. In tonight's Operation Crime and Justice Report, News 3's Denise Roche looks at what's being done to hammer out a solution. Ready, set. Whoa! Jeff Tyler says it's a decision he'll never regret. So we came up here and just fell in love with it. Settling in this growing northwest Las Vegas neighborhood, where new streets, new construction, and new parks are part of the draw. Boy, you're such a big boy. Development, though, that comes with its own brand of growing pains. One of the nights uh, somebody broke into the construction site, we have left our gates open uh, throughout the day for uh, construction coming in and out, and turns out they came in and wiped out one of the houses with everything inside. A story, Nat Hodgson with the Southern Nevada Home Builders Association. We're having a war on thieves. Has heard before. How big of a problem is construction theft in Southern Nevada? I don't think people realize it, it's a it's an astronomical big problem. It's in the millions. <laughs> Hodgson says the housing boom is back with as many as 1,000 new homes going up in the valley every month and thieves are taking notice, walking away with materials, tools, even appliances out of homes that were ready for delivery. And it's not really the material all the time. Of course, the material costs money. It's the damage you leave behind. It's the fixing you have to do when you whack off a piece of copper at a slab and then you've got to rip apart the slab and rerun the cop. It's just more than just the material being stolen. A problem that's happening across the country. Earlier this year, thieves walked away with $60,000 in stolen material from a construction site in Philadelphia. And in Chicago, police recovered half a million dollars worth of equipment in a single warehouse. A GPS tracker led them right to the stolen goods, something Hodgson says is being used in Las Vegas as well. GPSs, cameras, security, we're going to go to a portal where we're going to share the information with all the bu the builders are going to share the information through our hub that, that we're going to have real shortly here that shows the locations on what was hit, when it was hit, cross streets. And construction theft isn't limited to new commercial and home sites. Hate getting stuck in traffic? Theft from road projects could slow your commute. The biggest problem, once again, stolen copper. We need to be more proactive, and we have been. Mario Gomez is district engineer for the Nevada Department of Transportation. It gets stolen or disappears, then we're having to go back and we make another order with the contractor, and it takes time away from completing projects on time. Then there's the threat to existing infrastructure. Back in 2020, the spaghetti bowl plunged into darkness after thieves stole wire from roughly 20 light poles. The cost, $140,000. Six people were eventually arrested. Gomez says changes have been made. So we've got a couple of things uh, working for us in place right now. We have surveillance uh, security of, of our highways. Uh, right now at this point and then also not only includes our highways but also our uh, DOT buildings as well so parking lots and things of that sort. Still the old adage see something say something applies whether on the side of the road or in that brand new housing development. We were on the uh, the ring neighborhood watch always listening watching what people are doing and what's happening in the neighborhoods. That was Denise Ross reporting. About a month ago, Metro reactivated the organized retail and construction theft unit. It's something Sheriff Kevin McMahill wanted done. Our Operation Crime and Justice team has been sharing those stories and why it's needed now. During COVID, there was a lot of businesses that just weren't operating at the same level they were, so there was no necessary, uh, no need necessarily to have a construction theft section dedicated entirely to it. Now that construction is booming again, Vegas is doing much better. There's construction sites all over the place. If you have any tips about crime and safety in our community, send them to crime and justice at news3lv.com.
The FTC is taking aim at fake reviews online. Specifically, the agency wants to stop businesses who buy positive reviews and pay to suppress negative ones. The FTC hopes to do so with a new rule that could fine companies up to $50,000 per violation. In addition, the agency says it will retrieve money directly for deceived customers. Twitter CEO Elon Musk announced new restrictions for both verified and unverified accounts today. The social media site now limiting most users to viewing just 600 tweets a day or 6,000 if you are verified. According to Musk, the restrictions are temporary and were implemented to protect data on the site. It comes after thousands of people reported disruptions this morning with many receiving error messages that said rate limit exceeded or cannot retrieve tweet. Inflation not cooling off fireworks sales. What's behind the sky high purchases with days to go until sales must come to an end. The 4th of July right around the corner and already fireworks sales are skyrocketing. That's according to the American Pyrotechnics Association which says sales this year are on track to surpass $2.3 billion. It is a new all-time high and roughly $100 million more compared to last year. The boom in business partially due to a rise in prices caused by supply chain issues, but it also marks a major rebound from record losses during the pandemic when lockdowns eliminated most public gatherings. Illegal fireworks continue to cause problems in Clark County in a multi-agency campaign called You Light It, We Ride It aims to address that. Metro Police plans to partner with Clark County and city fire inspectors. They'll focus enforcement efforts in neighborhoods with previous firework issues and reported complaints. The, camp the county rather reports the website ispyfireworks.com logged more than 1,400 complaints from the public between June 28th and July 4th of last year. So we have a lot of calls or a lot of complaints coming from those areas. We will be targeting those neighborhoods or that community that's been issuing fireworks. The concern is, is if that neighborhood is occurring with a lot of fireworks, that means the potential of a fire occurring and our crews having to respond to that fire increases. Crews on patrol can issue citations if they see you lighting illegal fireworks. Fines range from as low as $500 in unincorporated Clark County to up to $10,000. If you are going out this weekend, do not drink and drive. Zero Fatalities Nevada is partnering with Lyft to offer $5 off a ride with the code Independence 2023. That promotion runs from 6 p.m. tomorrow through 6 a.m. Tuesday. And by the way, you can enjoy the 4th of July festivities while staying safe. Scan the QR code on your screen now. There you'll find a list of parades, fireworks shows, and specials at the Las Vegas Aviators game. Remember, safe and sane fireworks are only legal now through Tuesday. It has not been festive for flyers. Frustrated by delays, the CEO of United tells us what could help. Travelers taking to the skies for the holiday weekend may experience delays because of 5G. This is cell phone carriers are now free to boost their signals near airports. Aviation groups warned the signals could interfere with certain airplane equipment. However, airlines were given a grace period to retrofit their fleets. A majority of commercial planes have been updated, but Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg warns not everyone is ready. Delta being one of those airlines. The company cites issues with the supply chain as the reason for the holdup. United CEO Scott Kirby says the airline is working with the FAA and the Transportation Secretary to make improvements. Bad weather in the Northeast coupled with FAA staffing shortages led to hundreds of flights canceled or delayed, especially at Newark International Airport. Kirby says some changes are in the works. That includes updating and improving technology and balancing departures and arrivals better there at Newark. A cyclist memory lives on. The significance behind the three feet for Pete Rye. Local bicyclists are enforcing safety to remember a fellow cyclist. Las Vegas Centennial Subaru, in partnership with Three Feet for Pete, kicked off its Ride to Remember cycling event in honor of Pete Mikowski, who was killed in 2013 after being struck by a truck while on a training ride. And as you see here, hundreds of cyclists and local law enforcement cycled along that 28 mile ride from Las Vegas Boulevard to Gene and back. Uh, those of us that knew Pete, 
just kind of wanted to keep his memory alive, so we created this uh, this organization, um, Three Feet for Pete. Obviously, the Three Feet comes into play with the Nevada's Three Foot Cycling Law, you know, as far as protecting cyclists. And it was easy. It was kind of catchy. It was, you know, Three Feet for Pete, and it really took. We did an event our very first year and had like 200 riders, and it just it's taken off from there. Nevada's three foot law says motorists must move into the adjacent lane to the left if possible when passing cyclists. If not, motorists must pass with at least three feet of space between the vehicle and the bicycle. All proceeds from today's event will support the three feet for Pete and ride to remember. Let's turn out to your weather authority. A hot one out there. I hope everyone stayed hydrated mm. on that bike ride for sure. Even if you're going out for a walk, it's yeah. warm. And as you noted earlier, these temperatures came on fast. They came on fast, too fast for our bodies to yeah. acclimate. It normally takes us two weeks, and we were given two days from 110 to our forecast at 111. Mm. I always said if the heat comes, it's going to come fast. <laughs> Here and, we are. and it certainly <laughs> did. Only yesterday we were celebrating hitting 100. Today we hit 108, and tomorrow, we're surging right into the 110s for your forecast high. Live look out from Black Mountain at a sparkly strip. Visitors today, either depending on whether they have been to Vegas or not in July, loving it or hating it. We were anywhere from 102 in Blue Diamond to 112 in Sunrise, and we're expecting to break that 110 mark tomorrow. For, as for today, we were two degrees below that at the airport. Official high 108. That's even warmer than last year at 104. Our normal this time of the year 103, which we are currently sitting at with the light winds at the airport. Summerlin just at 100 degrees and just a couple degrees warmer in the east side. Sunrise at 103 right now. Boulder City already dropping in the 90s. 95 degrees for us by 11 o'clock. Low 90s at 1. Tonight we'll make our way down to 86 degrees for your overnight low clear skies with light winds. We've got 70s and 80s now climbing clear out of the 40s for our overnight low. Caliente even out climbing out of the 50s, so it's going to be a warm night and warm day as this high pressure continues to circulate over us. It's what's responsible for the heat. In fact, plastering most of the West Coast under one warning or another, including here in Southern Nevada, all of us under an excessive heat warning, except for the mountains to our north and the Spring Mountains to our west. We've got a uh, highs up to 118 across the region and the areas you see highlighted in red. Death Valley's high up to 125 tomorrow here in Las Vegas. Our forecast high 111, a little bit cooler out in summer at 108 Lake Las Vegas 114 and if you're going to be out in some in Lake Mead celebrating the holiday weekend 117 Death Valley 123 Sandy Valley 109 and up north in Alamo a little bit closer to 105 111 here in town light winds 5 to 10 heat risk moderate here in Las Vegas certain areas outside of Las Vegas major which does mean anybody without proper cooling or anybody without enough hydration will be affected by this heat. So reminders to wear loose light clothing, carry that water with you and that sunscreen, stay in the shade, watch pets, kids and elderly. And we do have some relief in sight as an area of low pressure swings by to our north. That'll push our low off to the south just a little bit, bringing some reprieve from the heat just in time for 4th of July. 107 though, those winds are going to come inconveniently that afternoon, 1 to 6 p.m. Should calm down in the evening to just breezes, though. So friendly air conditions for your 9 o'clock fireworks. After that, we'll hover in the 105, 106 range, but with afternoon breezes, which is much more manageable than, my goodness, 111, 113 mm -hmm. on Monday. We'll take the 105. We'll be acclimated to it There by you then. go. Yeah, and, and obviously those breezes helping too. Mm -hmm. Nice to say we're back to normal. Yes, <laughs> yeah, for better or worse, we are back to normal. Right, yes. Ophelia, thank you. You're welcome. And coming up in sports, we're talking some Aces basketball as they capped off a big week with a little bit of revenge against the Connecticut Sun. And now it's time for the Virgin Hotel's Las Vegas Sports Desk. 
Hey, what's up, Hoop Heads? We're talking Aces basketball tonight as they capped off a big week with back-to-back -back games against the two other teams hot on their heels in the WNBA standings. And tonight, it was all about getting a little revenge against Connecticut, the only team to hand them a loss this year. Last time out, Connecticut, they dominated the paint, but the Aces weren't about to let that happen this time around, and it showed in the first. Aces up three, and check out Candace Parker. The steal gets her Chelsea Gray on with a behind-the-back dish to Jackie for the deuce. Looks like an all-star to me, but hey, what do I know? Aces up 13-8. Eight. Asia and KP led the way in the first, combining for 20 points to help the ladies take an eight-point lead into the second quarter. And they kept on keeping on from there, playing out of their defense. Asia with the block on one end, the fast break, CP3 serving it up, and Alicia Clark does the rest down low, putting the aces up 42-33. Parker was having herself a day, showing up on the highlight left and right. First the reverse layup, and then again on the next possession from Asia. She is playing with a chip on her shoulder, and it's an 11-point aces lead. Candace Parker's Candace Parker. She's a legend, a Hall of Famer in this league, so she's going to do her. And I think we're surround, she's surrounding herself with all stars um, <laughs> like us. And uh, we're just going to continue, continue to gel and mesh and form that chemistry together. The sun started heating up, though, getting back to back triples from Bonner and Heidemann to cut the lead to six with about a minute and a half to go in the first half. But Vegas took an 11 point lead into the break and came out looking for the knockout blow. Gone on an 11 0 run to start the third quarter after Jackie stole it and KP buried it on the other end. You just can't stop these ladies at 70, 48 aces. All told, they would score 16 straight to start the second half and kept their foot on the gas from there. Late in the game, Chelsea Gray's reverse layup pushed her to 11 points, and for the second straight game, all five aces starters score double figures. If you've been paying attention, you know what that means. Another big aces win and a little revenge to go along with it. 102-84, the final to close out a big week for the ladies. It's very empowering and encouraging for everybody um, when we're getting stopped. And I thought in that third quarter, um, I don't know if they scored for about five and a half or so minutes, um, but it's a separation factor for us. So at the end of the day, I'm not coaching against the opponents. I'm saying, are we being who we're supposed to be, night in and night out? Um, and in, through that, we're trying to create, like I said, winning habits. Um, by going to work and holding each other accountable. They can make sure that we never lose sight of who we are. We have to play aces basketball for 40 minutes, no matter who we're playing, no matter what the score is, no matter, I don't care what's going on, on the outside. She makes sure that we never have lulls and just feel like we're just complacent in where we are. We have to continue to play and value every single possession because these games matter just as much as the games in the playoffs. So if that means cussing us out and going, Um, but yeah, we just go ahead and play Aces basketball. <laughs> so tonight's win pushes the Aces win streak to eight straight games. They've won those games by an average of 19 points. Pretty incredible. They are definitely cooking. Now they'll look to close out the home stand on Wednesday with a win against Dallas. For now, though, that is all the time we got in sports. As always, thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your night. The LV MPD marks a milestone. 50 years of service. The reflections on this golden anniversary when we come back. Coming up this week on Full Measure, a drug you might not have heard of has quietly become one of the most widely prescribed drugs in America, mostly for illnesses it was never FDA approved to treat. We'll look at why some watchdogs are linking gabapentin to the opioid epidemic and saying it should be more controlled. Coal waste plants are finding new purpose, providing energy to create the cryptocurrency Bitcoin. Find out why that's so controversial. With the Biden administration giving the IRS 80 billion of your tax dollars under the Inflation Reduction Act, get ready for more audits. Some critics accuse the IRS of auditing too many low-income earners and too few multimillionaires. Three, two, one, and liftoff of Artemis One. And we'll look at how much money man's long-awaited return to the moon is costing you under NASA's Artemis program. That's this week's Full Measure. fighting crime in this community is my top priority. I want to make sure that this is the safest community in America. It Finally tonight, words from Metro Police looking back on 50 years of the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department, which is celebrating its 50th anniversary. The department and the Clark County Sheriff's Office officially merged on this day in 1973. And that's how we leave you here on Live After the Game. Thank you so much for joining us. Our next broadcast is on News 3 Live at 11.